Hello and welcome to another episode on my channel. Today we are talking about regular expressions using a tool called Hyperscan. And uh, uh, I have put the logo of their website, hyperscan.io here. So let's do a quick intro of Hyperscan. Currently it's um, uh, been open sourced by Intel, but let's just take a quick peek at uh, its history. Hyperscan began in 2008 and evolved from a commercial closed source product um, which was developed by Sensory Networks Incorporated. And uh, later, um, it was acquired and released as open source software by Intel in October 2015. Um, Hyperscan is three clause BSD license and as they say, they are welcoming outside contributions. So overall, we'll look at, you know, this regex engine and how it's um, installed and what is uh, the various ways of using it. So um, quick word about the internals of Hyperscan. Hyperscan is an automata based um, example, NFA, DFA. Uh, the the finite deterministic and non-deterministic finite automata style approach rather than a backtrack approach. Um, the uh, other thing is that there's a big plus um, on using this automata NFA DFA based approach because it's amenable to a streaming and handling of multiple regular expressions. Um, on the downside, uh, the back references in arbitrary look around asserts are notable exp regular expression features that are not supported by um, hyperscan.io. Then uh, the next thing is that to use hyperscan, one has to uh, first of all compile the patterns to what is called as a database. And there are multiple ways to do that. There is a, a HS compile API. It compiles a single expression into a database. There is multi, which compiles uh, an array of expressions into a database. Um, and all of the patterns are scanned concurrently at the scan time, which gives us the speed that we need in the regular expression search. There's also extended parameters, and so there's APIs for that. So first step is really, you need to have uh, your, you know, your uh, expressions being compiled into a database before you can use them. And then the second step is to scan your buffer, which is your data coming in. The data could be streaming or otherwise, so there's multiple APIs for that. But you have to use the HS scan function to be able to do the work or the uh, finding of the expressions inside this buffer so that you can get uh, a callback saying, okay, this expression has been found. So um, that is in a sense what uh, the hyperscan.io is is uh, made of, or the the ways in which we can use it, the API calls, etc. Now let's um, do a quick. Uh, maybe we have a slide on installation now. So so we're going to look at the installation of Hyperscan, and the notable thing is that it can be built in various different ways. Now the way that I tried to build it or install it was this Ninja method because Ninja is a very fast um, compiler. Uh, and, and and so I like Ninja um, because I, I feel like it, it runs many times faster than make files. So um, I, I will show you using Ninja how to um, build this and install Hyperscan. And then we'll run a very simple example um, in their example folder, which is called simple regex. And so we're going to run that. And so you can basically start from there and you can uh, build more projects and so on or, or try different things from, from that point. But at this point, you should be able to uh, install uh, and run um, the Hyperscan using the simple regex example. So with that, let's just quickly look at um, the installation part first. So for installation, what I have already built it uh, and I've built it several different ways. So I'm just gonna build it for you um, 
by creating, let's say, uh, build four folder. So you can make a build folder, just make a folder that where you want to actually build this. And remember that I have, I have extracted the hyperscan folder here. I think you can get clone it or just download a tarball or whatever. But hyperscan is the source folder where I have extracted everything. And then inside this folder, I have made this build for. So I'm going to CD into build for. Um, and at this point, I am ready to run my CMake. So uh, if I just look at my CMake command, but I think uh, from this um, installation notes, it says CMake dash G generator. And for generator, we'll use Ninja and the source path. So we're going to do CMake dash G Ninja and then dot dot because my source folder is right outside this build for right so if you run this um, assuming your libraries are all there you may be missing a couple of libraries like boost um, or, or some other libraries so make sure you're you have installed all those libraries um, and once those libraries are installed then only come to this step now here we have our um, build folder ready and at this point all we have to do is inside this folder run ninja and you see that 334 files need to be compiled to be able to build this library. And it's going to take a little bit of time, although Ninja is extremely fast. Um, this will probably take a couple of minutes. So I'm going to pause the video here and we'll come back to this later um, and pick it up from here. All right, you guys. So this has finished compiling. And now, as you can see, 334 out of 334 articles have been built and linker has finished. So at this point, one thing we can do is to install this library. Now I've already installed it, so it's probably not gonna do anything, but let's just say the step is ninja uh, install. And what you have to do is run this as a super user. And so you're gonna do sudo ninja install. And it's probably gonna say that I have already uh done everything so there you see it says that i'm already up to date i'm uh done with the installations there is no problem here um in your case it'll probably be installing at this point and so once the installation is done just run ld config um oops sorry you have to run it as a super user and so that makes sure that your library caches are uh, up to date and now that we have built everything, we are ready to go. We can now look at this examples folder inside Hyperscan. And inside this, the simplest thing to do is to compile the simple grep.c. Now let's take a quick peek at simple grep.c. Um, and let's turn on the line numbers here. And so you can see that it's um, program one, right? <laughs> Um, it's like a 101, the very first program uh, uh, of the hyperscan is simple grep. And it's the most basic functionality. It'll search a given input file for a pattern supplied as a command line argument. So it's a single pattern. HS compile, HS scan functions will be demonstrated. And patterns are scanned in the dot all mode, which is equivalent to a PCRE modifier. This behavior can be changed by modifying the flags argument to the HS compile. Right, and it then shows you the build instructions are that you can run GCC uh, using this and package config, blah, blah, blah. Right, so you can compile it using um, this and, uh, and supply these options. Um, and in fact, let's just um, make a copy of this because I had compiled it using a different method. Um, just, uh, I want to try this. Um, so I'm going to just paste it here and I'm going to comment out my compile instructions. Um, so there you go. So uh, come back to this. So you can see that those are instructions here and then the usage and example is right here. Um, you can basically look at these. This file is very well commented. I really like it. Um, and so the important things are that, you know, you go through this, you will see that there's an event handler when the matches happened in the uh, hyperscan, this event handler is called, so you can either print it or do some post-processing, um, things like that. You may want to store this in a database or, or 
uh, set some flags and so on on your buffer because some event has happened. So there, there is some functions that you can code up here, but the other things are, let's just skip through this um, and let's show you the main, right? Because this is where the call really happens. So the first thing is that you need to compile, right? So as they said, it is a dot all um, based uh, semantics, meaning the meta characters will be matched and so on uh, using the PCRE um portal compatible regular expression and so there's different modes you can look at these flags etc but the important thing is that this instruction is compiling whatever we input um into the um into the pattern as argv1 um that is going to be compiled into this database right so um what is the output of this is this database right you can see that this database is what we're going to get and then when we have the database um, you can basically read the input data into this buffer um, input data right so input data is your data which is coming from a file in this case it could come from anywhere it could be a packets flowing in through your network port etc and then um, you have to build this scratch. Now, I didn't quite understand what the scratch was, but you can read here and it shows you that we need, before we issue a call to the HS scan, we need, uh, we will create this um, scratch space that needs to be allocated. Now it can be reused and so on, even though they free it with every call here because there's only one call, but this scratch is not to be created every time. Um, so the scratch is created and then finally, Finally, the long awaited call here is the HS scan. And so this it has the database, the input data, um, the length, um, scanning bytes with a hyperscan. And uh, I'm not sure where the length came from. Let's just quickly search for this. Um, and I think this is the read input data. Okay, so, so it has um, the length of the database, or sorry, of the of the file or whatever the buffer that is being input to this. So that length is provided. The scratch obviously is provided. An event handler is provided in case the match happens. You're going to call back to the event handler and the pattern that we compiled. Um, so, uh, and I'm not really sure why the pattern is injected when we have the database. So let's quickly check that um, pattern. Right, so you have compiled the pattern into the database. Um, okay, so in this case, I guess um, the pattern is also provided to the HS scan but I'm curious now that when you have an array of patterns, what does it mean to be passing the pattern here to the HS scan? Because we have already compiled this to database, but I guess I'm not very well versed uh, with HS scan at this point, so I cannot say, but that would be interesting, I guess, uh, and I need to do some more experiments to see why this pattern was even acquired here because we've already compiled it to database. But anyway, moving on. So this HS scan has basically now done its work. It has, essentially uh, scanned the uh, whole database with this input data and found where the patterns match. And it has, if it's successful, it has probably called this callback event handler, which would print where the patterns have matched. And if all this goes well, then the pattern would be matched and you would be good to go. If it fails, then you're done in this case and you do some uh, cleanup work here and now that we are done with all the work, now we'll free the scratch. Now remember, scratch is not to be freed with every search. It's one-time operation and you can keep that, you can amortize that over multiple, multiple lookups. And in this case, the program is winding down, so it frees everything and we are done. So with that, um, I'm going to pause here for just a quick sec to try out the command for compilation that we saw. So I'll be back in a minute. Alrighty guys, I am back and in fact, I tried that and it did not work. So I'm just gonna run it. Uh, I'll show you my compile program. Uh, and it is basically just 
it includes the um, include files in the HS and the library libhs.a. It uses some standard libraries like math library, nested C++. Um, and then it's just simply compiling the program. It's uh, very, very simple, right? So um, I, I think there's nothing complicated. Now, I would say that when you did Ninja install, uh, make sure that you, you go to your um, install build folder and, and you keep a copy of where your uh, header files went, like the include files. So you have to put, if you went in, a, I, hopefully you went in the same location so you can copy this. But if you did not, then you have to go and find where your um, hs.a library is and where your include files are. Now, if you have been doing this correctly, then you can just compile it. And at this point, it should compile this into a a.out file. I haven't even renamed it. This is like very, very basic, right? So you see that a.out has been created. And if you just run a.out, it'll tell you that it needs a pattern and an input file. Now I've created this input file, which has a very simple text in it. Quick brown fox, I'm sorry, this I cannot spell. Um, so quick brown uh, fox jumps over the lazy dog, right? So what we're gonna do is now we're gonna run this and the pattern is basically, let's just say L star Z Y. I'm looking for L star Z Y in my file hello.txt. And it says the pattern has been found at offset 37. We can just go there and see that the lazy character is at offset 37. So it matched it right there. Um, and then if you put like uh, another lazy, let's say lazy uh, and another lazy, let's see what, what happens when we do that. Um, so you see that it has actually given us multiple matches and probably that callback that we saw earlier, the event uh, callback, it seemed like whenever it found a complete match, it made a call to that callback, which printed the uh, pattern. Now, earlier we said that, you know, it's a, it's a match, but it's supposedly also telling us which pattern matched. So I guess um, it's, Interesting, at some future date, I will try to make a video which has multiple patterns and array of patterns. I would like to try that out and see how the array of um, regexes match and how the hyperscan is able to handle all of them and tell you exactly which of the patterns matched. Um, but for this episode, that's really a wrap here because I've shown you uh, what the history of hyperscan is and how to install Hyperscan. And then at the end of it, showed you a simple grep example, which comes packaged inside Hyperscan. And so if you have questions on uh, this process, or if you have questions about what I've showed you here, you can leave me in the comments. Um, I'll try my best to answer them, but in many cases, even I have to Google because I followed one process, it worked for me, I'm familiar with it. If you apply that process, I can probably help you more easily. Otherwise, I'll be doing the same Google searches that you might be doing. So um, hopefully this was um, helpful and useful. If you are looking into hyperscan or regular expressions, this might speed you up uh, and get you off the ground so that you can start to do more interesting stuff with hyperscan. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, I would say please subscribe uh, to my channel and I will definitely add more videos in the series uh, to look at things like arrays and more interesting, you know, uh, arguments to um, hyperscan that might be very, very useful. I'm also looking at working on a, a video that shows what the NFA DFA parts are. In fact, I'm trying to build a very, very simple Python compiler that can, uh, you know, compile to NFA uh, or DFA and, and show some examples um, as to what the differences there are. So uh, if you are interested in these topics, look forward to those videos and uh, I will see you uh, on a later date. Thanks a lot for watching my channel and goodbye.